With current space launch technology, 80% of a rocket's mass is fuel, while the actual payload is only 6%. A great deal of monetary and energy resources are devoted to overcoming Earth's gravity. To send up one pound, it costs roughly $10,000. Eliminating the use of rockets to transport payloads to space could be both cost-effective and environmentally friendly. One potential space transportation system to replace rocket technology is a space elevator. A space elevator is a physical connection from the surface of the Earth at the equator to a point in geostationary Earth orbit, or GEO, approximately 35,786 kilometers above the Earth. The elevator's center of mass is placed at a point in GEO to allow the elevator to remain in phase with the same point in the Earth's surface. The purpose of building a structure of such extraordinary proportions is to provide a significantly cheaper and safer method for transporting both payloads and persons to space. If the space elevator is constructed, it would reduce the cost per pound by a factor of a thousand. However, for it to be feasible, it requires cost-efficient and high-strength-to-weight materials for the tether that can withstand the many hazards associated with space. Given that most materials today are either too dense or fragile, advances in materials are required to make this elevator construction a true possibility. With the advent of nanotechnology, scientists are claiming that carbon nanotubes could make this once fictitious project a reality. This experimental material could provide the much-needed tensile strength, lightness, and flexibility required to build the tether portion of the space elevator. Carbon nanotubes are cylinders composed of one or more layers of graphene, an atom-thick sheet of pure carbon arranged in a hexagonal lattice. These atoms are bonded by sp2 bonds, which are stronger than the sp3 bonds found in diamond. Carbon nanotubes consisting of one graphene sheet are referred to as single-walled nanotubes, or SWNTs, and nested cylinders with interlayer spacing of half a nanometer are called multi-walled nanotubes, or MWNTs. Both have different properties. For instance, MWNTs stretch more easily than SWNTs because they have a telescopic nature due to its nested graphene sheets. In addition, the way in which the graphene sheet is wrapped, called chorality, also affects carbon nanotubes' properties. There are currently three configurations of the carbon nanotube, armchair, zigzag, and chiral. In the zigzag configuration, the tops of the hexagons form a zigzag line of traced. The chiral configuration is similar to the zigzag in appearance, but has dangling bonds at the ends, and the graphene sheet is wrapped at such an angle that you could see an angled column of hexagons. The armchair configuration has a straight column of hexagons. SWNTs can make space elevator construction a reality because of its high strength to weight ratio. Out of the three configurations, armchair SWNTs have the strongest mechanical properties. With a high Young's modulus of 0.94 terapascals, armchair carbon nanotubes can withstand massive amounts of force per area with minimal stretching. In addition, because of the material's high tensile strength of 126.2 gigapascals, it will take an order of magnitude of 10 to the 11th newtons before they elastically deform. In comparison, high strength alloy ASTM A514 steel, which is primarily used for building construction, has an ultimate tensile strength of 758 megapascals and a Young's modulus of 210 gigapascals, which is 0.21 terapascals. Space elevators require material with high mechanical properties because the elevator's tether must be able to carry its own weight as well as cargo without coming close to deforming or failing. Current materials, such as structural steel, do not meet these standards. However, with armchair SWNT's structural properties, constructing a space elevator is feasible. In addition to their excellent mechanical properties, carbon nanotubes possess exceptional electrical properties. With a small band gap and low electron scattering, carbon nanotubes efficiently conduct electricity. In conventional metals, electrical conduction causes electron scattering, in which electrons impact other atoms. These collisions create friction and produces heat. Carbon nanotubes, however, conduct electricity very differently. Electrons move straight through material with little interference with the carbon atoms. However, the processing of this material can make it exhibit either metallic or semiconductive behavior. Armchair SWNTs have no band gap and as a result act as conductors, while chiral and zigzag SWNTs act as semiconductors. This effective conduction is another reason why armchair carbon nanotubes can make space elevator construction a strong possibility. The space elevator must be electrically powered to allow vehicles, known as climbers, to ascend and descend the cable. One of the most common ways that carbon nanotubes are produced is through the technique of chemical vapor deposition. During CVD, a substrate is prepared with a metal catalyst and then heated to approximately 700 degrees Celsius. A carbon-containing gas, such as methane, is pumped into the heating reactor where the gas is broken down to produce pure carbon molecules. When the carbon atoms diffuse towards the substrate, it will bind to the catalyst and initiate growth. This process creates a forest of nanotubes with a unique property of connectivity between each tube. When one nanotube is pulled out, it drags along the surrounding tubes in its vicinity, which then allows the forest to be stretched out and spun into thin thread. The process of chemical vapor deposition is great because it has low power input. It produces carbon nanotubes with relatively high purity, 
and has a bright prospect of scaling up the process. The process of chemical vapor deposition shows potential in scaling up the production of carbon nanotubes. However, researchers at Rice University have developed a new method that they claim is more effective. Using similar techniques implemented in the production of Kevlar, researchers dissolve large amounts of pure nanotubes in strong acetic solvents like sulfuric acid. They found that the nanotubes dissolved in the acetic solutions aligned themselves like packaged spaghetti to form liquid crystals that could then be spun into microfilament fibers about as thick as a human hair. Although this method is very promising to produce carbon nanotubes at the large scale, it produces a myriad of different carbon nanotubes with different properties, lengths, and diameters. Current research is being done to find the method of crafting only one type of carbon nanotubes with higher purity. We all have been talking about how well behaved the carbon nanotubes could be in terms of its properties, such as cost efficiency and high strength to weight. However, carbon nanotubes has limitations for building such a project, like the space elevator. First of all, NASA needs about 144,000 miles of nanotubes to build a space elevator. Carbon nanotubes has been too brittle to be formed into such long pieces. In theory, a carbon nanotubes could extend 22,000 miles above the Earth, which is only 15% of the length we desired. In the way, the presence of a even few vacancies in a single nanotubes play a dramatic role. We expect pre-existing defects in such a huge cable. For instance, Different statistical models are presented to estimate the strength of defect carbon nanotube-based space elevator cable. All those methods suggest to expect a mega cable strength reduced by a factor of at least 70% with respect to theoretical nanotube strengths. Thus, experiments in atomic simulation based on molecular or quantum mechanics on carbon nanotubes confirm this argument. Although the space elevator is expected to be in 15 years, with a $10 billion budget, the expected time and money consuming would be double due to defects in the cable. Accordingly, a detailed analysis on the rule of defects in the cable seems to be crucial. In addition to strength and density, the fractional toughness has to be taken into account and cannot be further neglected. The quantum fractional mechanic critical will help in solving the problem of a correct nanostructure mega cable design. Okay, now a sanity check. The space elevator could revolutionize space travel in the near future. Instead of consuming expensive and valuable resources using current space vehicles, people and materials can be transported to space using this novel technology at significantly lower environmental and financial costs. Currently, there is no material in high availability that is able to meet the demanding stress that is required of this project. However, carbon nanotubes may be the saving grace. This material has astounding mechanical and electrical properties that satisfy the requirements needed to build a space elevator tether. The current major setback of carbon nanotubes is the production at the microscopic scale. However, researchers are making great strides in this field and making this one science fiction idea into a reality.